For 10 years, property expert Sarah Beanie has been telling other people how to develop their houses. But will she practice what she preaches as she tries to save this stately Yorkshire pile from ruin? 30 acres of land, 40,000 square feet, 30 bedrooms, 200 years old. Rise Hall is home for Sarah, husband Graham and their three kids. We had our wedding here and it's been a happy place. But this romantic dream has now become a real nightmare. The main culprit is really dry rot. It's been a huge drain on the family's finances. A house like this is a money pit. Because it's on the brink of collapse. I didn't think there was a woodworm in this area. Rise Hall needs saving fast. This is a building in crisis. It would be a terrible shame to lose it. Over the next three weeks, we'll follow Sarah and husband Graham as they attempt to save Rise from ruin and transform it into a top wedding venue. This is great. This is property development on a massive scale. This is probably as big as it gets. The first wedding is only eight months away. We can achieve this. Let's hope so, eh? That's we're going to look right, chumps. <laughs> It'll test their finances. If this was a National Trust property, you would expect them to be spending about £10 million on this project, or well, we don't even have 5% of that. Their patience. Are the radiators coming? Yeah, or not. Or not coming. Yeah. And their relationship. I'll be honest with you, quite not. It's the biggest challenge of Sarah's career. <laughs> Can the queen of TV property save this 200-year-old stately stack and finally make it pay for itself? If it doesn't get finished, we're in serious trouble. The sheer scale of this project could easily swallow us whole. Dry rot, wet rot, woodworm, mould. Sadly, we've got the lot. 149 windows, 97 rooms. It's terrifyingly huge. Nestled between Hull and the coast, Rice Hall is a Georgian jewel in the East Yorkshire countryside. For the past decade, it's played home to Sarah, her hubby Graham and their ever-expanding clan. It's a place where the kids can go a little wild and mum and dad can kick back and relax. Graham always said that if we bought a stately home, he'd marry me. So I thought, well, we better get a stately home, then he could marry me. And he did ask me to marry him on the roof up at the top of here. It was great, actually. He said, there's a lovely sunset, let's go and sit on the ridge. And we sat on the ridge. I was a bit shocked when he actually asked me. It's one of those things you think, blimey, gosh, you've actually done it. We had our wedding here and we thought it was amazing, and it was the romance of it. Ultimately, we wanted a house with columns and steps up to the front door and a big staircase. Rise Hall is huge. 97 rooms in 30 acres of land. But they got it for a song, £430,000, about the same price as a suburban semi in London. We were quite happy to live in this in a slightly bohemian way, which is what we do, and it wasn't... It was, it, it was built to be lived in. Yeah. Do you like the big house, boys? Yeah. What's your favourite thing about the big house? Um, trampoline. <laughs> oh, I'm very high. You can scoot round it. But it's not a museum. I think that's the other thing, is that a lot of these houses are treated like museums. It was built as a home, and we wanted it to be a home. Yeah, I, there, there was also a friend of ours who said, you, you just don't do that sort of thing. You live in a flat until you have children and then you go and buy a slightly bigger house. And we thought, no, we bloody don't. We're going to go and buy this dirty great thing that you're telling us not to. I, I, think, there was, I think there was a bit of bloody mindedness. We've got the best view in East Yorkshire, I should think. It's absolutely beautiful here. And there isn't really anything wrong with it, apart from the condition. Yes, the condition. Like many of Britain's stately homes, it's falling into the ground. Built in 1815, it's nearly 200 years old. Made up of two floors, its front third, the part that Sarah and her family stay in, is in need of serious refurbishment. 
The rest just gets worse. For years, I've advised people on Property Ladder as to what they should do, and I mean, the first thing I'd probably say if I had turned up here and I was a contributor on Property Ladder, you shouldn't have bought it. And I'd be right, we shouldn't have done, but, you know. If Sarah and Graham don't start restoring Rise Fast, it could quickly go the way of Uffington House in Lincolnshire that went from this to this in just a very few years. To help with the rescue, Sarah has recruited an army of local tradesmen. It's a massive job. Rotting fixtures to be ripped out, treacherous floors to be fixed, the to-do list is almost endless. And Sarah's putting her family, her finances and her reputation on the line. Failure, as they say, is not an option. I know I'm incredibly lucky, amazingly fortunate, and, and most people would consider me to be kind of successful, but I still have to get it right. I mean, there's no bottomless pit of money there. This, this is costing a fortune and, and could easily take us down financially. Has the Queen of Property Development finally bitten off more than she can chew? What do her workforce think? We don't know how much experience Sarah's had with a big project. Three bedroom semi or whatever, it's not this sort of thing. It's, it's a big job and it needs somebody who's experienced. And whether she's got that experience or not, I just don't know. We've got electricity to there anyway. Well, even Sarah said herself, this, will, this should be a two year project. So trying to cram it into, what, what was it, eight, six, seven months? Saving a house like Rise should cost millions, but Sarah doesn't have anywhere near that kind of cash. And even if she did, the price of the restoration would be far more than the final value of the finished property. So she's going to use every trick she knows to deliver the project on budget. For a start, Sarah's going to manage it herself, and not from Rise Hall, but from her base in London. Assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, project managing this from 200 miles away will save us a lot of money. With both time and money being tight, can Sarah and her restoration army save Rise and be ready for that all-important first wedding? Sarah Beanie has set her sights on saving this historic and crumbling stately home and turning it into a top-flight wedding venue. This is a building in crisis. It would be a terrible shame to lose it. To cover restoration costs and keep the house running, Sarah and Graham have to get Rise to start paying for itself. But to turn it into a stunning wedding venue, they're going to have to overhaul the front hall and give it the spectacular factor that'll impress any couple contemplating getting hitched at Rise. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. And the real fun begins inside. For the weddings, people will come through this front door into this area where they can have their champagne and drinks and, and have a very glamorous time. It'll be a much nicer room because the main thing we're doing in here is to repaint it, but it's a bit of a bigger job than just uh, any old lick of paint. The largest reception room will be the centerpiece for functions at Rise Hall. And these sweeping stairs will become the perfect place for wedding photos. If you think about the fact that you could probably fit two terrace houses in this one room, there's a lot of scaffold that needs to go up. A lot of scaffold, a lot of paint. <laughs> and the final reception room is somehow going to turn from a games room into something a lot more illustrious. So in here, 
Uh, we're going to have this as a, a more contemporary room. It'll be painted in contemporary colours and it'll be our modern art gallery. Leaving the reception rooms, guests will then be asked to make their way through the middle third of the house en route to the main function hall at the back. You may need to use your imagination here. This is the final approach down to the great hall where wedding receptions will be taking place. And um, as you can see, it's fantastic. It's, it's dark, <laughs> I and mean, we have to do something about this. Not only do we have to paint it, you know, you, you have to make it a nice walkway down and not just feel like an enormously large, dark corridor. And down the end of the enormously large, dark corridor is a remnant of Rice Hall's years as a convent school for girls. This sports hall, a fine example of 70s architecture, sits rather unpleasantly on the end of the grand old building. This area isn't part of the original building. It, it was built in the 1970s when it was a school, and this is the entrance going into the sports hall. What's quite hilarious is this is all 40 years old, and the rest of the house is 200 years old, and you can see what a shocking state this bit is in. Sarah could have considered knocking it down and starting all over again, but that would have been completely budget-busting. And there's a sentimental reason, too. We actually had our wedding in here. Got fond memories of it. See, we think it's fabulous, as it is. But anyway, it's very good for playing football at the moment and badminton, but, um, but not great for weddings. So we're going to change the windows. So it's a question of making it watertight, dry, heated. Yeah. You won't recognise it, I absolutely assure you. The other thing that you do have to think about is that, you know, if they loved all the rest of the house and then they come through here, if it isn't good enough, people aren't going to get married here and all this money that we're spending is for no purpose. Transforming the sports hall isn't the only makeover miracle they need to perform. On the top floor, there are one or two habitable family bedrooms, but at the moment, there's nowhere for a wedding party to spend the night. So here we've got... Um, we're going to have two bedrooms here and a bathroom. This is uh, what happens if you don't use a house. It's just a mould that's in the air and um, you end up with this. Lovely. She may be Sarah Beanie, but even she's going to struggle to convince anyone that this dank, damp disaster area can be transformed into the place to spend your wedding night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I feel like a contributor on Property Ladder. <laughs> I'm kind of like, hmm, yeah, we can do up this enormous stately home with 30 bedrooms yeah, in six I'm... months. That's no problem. And we've only got a budget of £3.50. I'm quite a lot more <laughs> nervous now that I'm looking at it, actually. We can achieve it. You can achieve mm. anything if you try hard enough. Rice Hall has had many uses in the last 200 years. For the first 125 years of its life, it was the family home of the Bethels and the scene of a fair few aristocratic knees-ups. During the Second World War, it served as a hospital, and after that, it became the St Philomena Convent School for Girls, who looked like they forgot to clear up after themselves when they moved out in 1989. After that, it was left to rot, until young lovebirds Sarah and Graham took pity on it and bought it from a particularly interested estate agent. At the time, I was the chairman of the Georgian Society of East Yorkshire, so I had a particular interest in this building, which is, after all, one of the most important in the county. I was really particularly thrilled at the idea of somebody who was mad enough to take it on as a private house and do the place up, and I think it's fantastic that Rise is going to earn its keep in a way that it probably has never earned its keep since the day it was built. Although Sarah wants to bring the house into the 21st century, there are some old customs she's desperate to keep alive. Throughout its long history, Rise has employed countless local people in a myriad of jobs. 
And Sarah wants to keep this tradition going, so she's hired local folk like Jeff the Roofer to help her save the hall. It is a very, very good place to work, very handy. Yeah, it's nice, not like work sometimes. Not when you're living, working in a place like this. It's a beautiful place. When I first came, it was still a girls' school. It's gone from being a home to being a convent and it's back to a home. But uh, soon with the wedding venue, which will be good. Good to see it up and running again. I've got the income coming off it, and Gary, my oldest son, he's got his income coming off it as well, which there's quite a bit of work wants doing. Well, it is a big project to do in a short space of time, but it's just a, it's a nice project. It's bringing, obviously, a nice building back to life kind of thing, so... Trying to restore Rise is going to require a huge amount of man and heavily pregnant woman power. Oh, oh that's hard work. That Here, let me a bit, have a go. A bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> but Sarah's got to be careful with the sledgehammer because Rise is full of hidden historical treasures that have been obscured by pupil proof plasterboard for the last couple of decades. There's a fireplace. That's so cool. How brilliant. Genuine Regency wallpaper. How about that? Do you think it's as... Yeah, well, it would be, cos the Victorians put... Yeah, that's, a, that's an historical fact. I don't think it's really old, but it's very pretty. I think my mother had wallpaper like that when I was a child, which is why So I... it's not really old, it's 1970s. Yeah, it so. probably is. We really only have the originals in places like this, where they've come along and just put a, another floor down because the floor heights weren't right, and so we've got loads of this sort of space going on. Maybe they wanted a place for rats to live. And it's not only the house that needs to be overhauled. The grounds have to be picture postcard perfect too. This is very much Graham's gig, but he's got big welly boots to fill as the original landscaping of Rise was done by the 17th century master gardener Capability Brown. Undaunted, Graham wants to restore this muddy hole in the ground into a beautiful pond teeming with fish. Take, take the corners off it more, so have it a bit more, you know, a sort of semicircle ending rather than it's quite square at the moment, isn't it? You want it just as far out as that then, aren't you? No. We're reducing the size of this a lot. In the 17th century, this would have taken weeks, but with diggers costing a fortune, Graham has got just one day. Could you say good morning? Hi. Say hi, this is Nick, Billy, Charlie. Are you all right? Look, they've given you a hat. <laughs> yeah, wow! <laughs> that is so cool. It's a big one. Jeez, look at the size of that. It's a caterpillar. It's called a caterpillar. Do you think it'll turn into a butterfly? <laughs> it's a caterpillar digger. It's a caterpillar digging, all right, honey. You just hope that it doesn't all go pear shaped. It may be costing a small fortune, but Sarah's convinced it's worth all the work. It's amazing to think that, fingers crossed, a bit of luck, following wind, it's going to be a bride and groom coming down this drive, and it will be beautifully landscaped and not a pile of mud. I know this is a little bit cheeky. Would you, um, I just, I, I have to drive one of the diggers. Would you mind? No. It just seems a bit unfair that you have all the fun. <laughs> okay, so what do I do? Right. Yep, cool. Pull that lever back. <laughs> this way. This is great. I want to go. You can't. It's my choice. I just want to be a digger driver. This is brilliant. That's that's quite a lot achieved in one day. Not bad for 1,500 people, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Put enough people and enough diggers and you can achieve amazing things. It'll take months for the pond to fill and grass to grow, but today has proved to Sarah and Graham that together they can achieve incredible things. Graham has dreams and I make it happen. It's 
a dangerous partnership, really. But the pond is only the first small step in the right direction. The biggest threat to their dream is very small. Dry rot spores. The rot is systematically eating its way through the house, room by room, destroying walls and woodwork. The big problem with dry rot is that it's, it runs behind plasterwork, it takes all the moisture out of the wood, it drinks wood, so it takes the moisture out of the wood, which means that the wood loses its structural integrity, all needs to be taken out and burnt and then replaced. The damp, moist conditions may be terrible for weddings, but they're perfect for dry rot. Well, this is live dry rot. Obviously, something here has been weeping, so it's a nice damp patch that it's just had a really good chomp on. It's kind of amazing stuff. If you look, it's sort of... This is live dry rot. The only way of treating dry rot is you have to remove the source of the moisture. You've got to stop it being wet. That is the most important thing. Sarah and Graham have literally got to stop the rot and stop it fast. And the only way to do that is to make the whole house watertight. A massive job. It's clear the roof needs attention, but surprisingly, one of the major sources of moisture in Rise is the rotting sash window frames. We've got 149 sash windows on the main house here. They've been neglected over the years and they're in a terrible, terrible state. It's a huge, huge job. When we bought this place, I should think none of these windows have been painted for 20 years. They can deal with a certain amount of weather, just not 20 years worth of no painting. If you look at this window here, actually it doesn't look so bad in this section, but under the paint, it's just, there's nothing there. That it's completely and totally. This is like cotton wool in here. Actually, you can go right through to the other side. So you can see me coming in the other side. Look at that. Hello. <laughs> All 149 frames will need replacing. And at a grander window, that's 149,000 quid. Money they just can't spare. But Sarah has tracked down a company that claims to be able to repair the existing frames for a fraction of the cost of new windows. Graham, though, isn't hugely optimistic about his other half's plan. So, hang on, you're, you're going to fix this? Yes. With... with explain that to me. I, no. I would have thought that was kind of... It's... It's, past it's easy it. fixable. We're getting it down to a sound surface and then we're going to build it up with some of our uh, special uh, glues we use and, and timber. Resin. Yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah. And will it be as good as new? It'll be better than new. Better than new? Yes. Blimey! I wouldn't have thought you'd be able to fix that, really. That's... I'm looking forward to seeing it. Only a couple of hours and we'll put it to rest. You're, you're worth your wait. <laughs> <laughs> there are millions of sash windows in the UK. There's a chance that you have them in your home. But loads are rotting, just like Sarah's. All they need is TLC and a lick of paint every couple of years. But Sarah's gone all high-tech to keep her sashes sound for the future. The staff bead here, you pop off, and that means that you can take the sash out. Instead of being nailed, they've got a little mechanism which has been fitted with a break on it. And then you can take it down you can properly paint the window, which means you maintain your windows on a regular basis and save yourself a lot of time and money in the long run. So, with the appliance of a little bit of science and gloss paint, these windows should be good for another hundred years. The window firm have been true to their word and have salvaged something from the window wreckage for less than a quarter of the cost of a new window. So that's one down, just another 148 to go. Good luck, lads. And the reality is this is so big, the house, that any problem anyone would have in any house is likely to be wrapped within these walls. We're going to come across pretty much every problem anyone's ever had. That makes it impossible to calculate the costs of a restoration this size. 
For someone who for years has been telling people to work to a budget, that sits very uncomfortably with Sarah. Ten years ago, Sarah and Graham bought this tumble-down stately home in Yorkshire for their family to grow up in and have fun. But the building was also at risk, and it's quite honestly become a massive cash albatross. So now they've got to find a way to make it pay for itself. Graham and I had our wedding here, and oh, we thought it was amazing. And I'm, perhaps that is the solution for other people to be able to use it for the same purpose. The hall is desperately run down. Rainwater has got in everywhere and is systematically destroying the interior. Over the years, they've sunk £100,000 on the roof alone. But even that hasn't been enough to make it watertight. Quite early on, after we bought the house, we started re-roofing from the front back. And, and you know, that in itself, just the front section of the house, has cost the same as a normal house just to re-roof it. It's, it's a very expensive process, but there's no point in doing anything underneath if you've still got water pouring in but it gets worse and worse and worse the further away you get from where we are standing now. That's all uh, the cutting, yeah. it, Jeff. Is that that? Yeah, that's the other half of that one. The problem here is that on these valley sections, the, the lead's that old, it's perished. And as you can see here, it's, it's got cracks appearing down the centre of the valley which water's going to penetrate, so no, no trouble. And the ceilings have been done, actually, before the valley's been repaired, so water is damaging the new ceilings. It's easy to ignore your roof, but you do so at your peril. With a bit of regular, low-cost maintenance, it'll keep you dry for decades. But the roofs at Rise haven't been that lucky. And now they need some serious TLC to keep the Yorkshire wind and rain out. If you see any slipped slates, make sure that you get someone to come in quickly and sort it out before the problem gets worse. It's, it doesn't cost very much to do. You must keep your gutters free of leaves. That's really essential. Here you can see there's lots of leaves that have landed in this gutter. Is anyone down there? Sorry. <laughs> The work fixing the main roof seems to be in hand. But just as one problem is solved at Rise, another one pops up to take its place. Over at the gym, come wedding reception venue, there's a serious problem. I mean, obviously it's leaking, we can yeah. see that from the inside, but what do you reckon about the roof? The roof's probably been on 15, 20 years, so you, you're getting towards the end of the useful life of the, the membrane anyway. If it's not, rectified soon enough, the deck eventually will fail. Disintegrate. Disintegrate. So you mean collapse, the roof yeah. will collapse? Yeah, basically, eventually. What are we talking about in terms of money here? If you're stripping it off and putting a new deck in place, it's several tens of thousands of pounds. OK, that's brilliant, because we've got about 300 quid aside yeah. for that, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that's not going to be something that we're able to do. What, what, what are the alternatives? There must be an alternatives in the terms alternative of is to overlay over. what you've got there mm -hmm. uh, which would in, basically what you'd have to do is you'd have to take all the moss and lichen growth off and Oops. then follow it through with, with uh, felt over the top what sort of figure are we talking on that do you think materials costing is roughly around 15 pound a square meter Okay. Uh, for a two way system. 200 square metres of roof there, aren't Yeah, we? roughly. So we're probably talking about with uh, labour, five grand or something like uh, that? It's probably, probably been more than that, to be honest. It's the classic restoration dilemma. Bust the budget for the permanent fix, or just patch it up to save some cash. For Sarah and Graham, who are already struggling to keep the budget in check, it has to be the latter. A house like this is a money pit. You could get rid of a million pounds like that on this house. It would be easy peasy. Whenever they can, Sarah and her gang slip up the M1 for a little R&R &R at Rise Hall. Often they're joined by her brother, Dickon, and his brood. The two families are very, very close indeed. Dickon happens to be married to Graham's sister. 
I mean, that, that yeah. isn't actually yeah. illegal. All of the children are all very fond of each other, so they tend to play as a pack, which makes life terribly convenient for parents. Mm. So it's not really uh, a hardship to bring them all here. Sarah and Graham have run a property development business with Dickon for many years and value his opinion. Although you get the feeling he may be being somewhat diplomatic when it comes to his thoughts on the sports hall. This is going to be a lovely room and it doesn't need anything very much more than tables laid up on it. If the, roof ce if the ceiling's tented, that's going to be yeah. enough. Graham, however, is less convinced by Dickens' silver tongue. You think people would be won over for their wedding day? Probably, I, th I agree, 40s, 50s, I think maybe they'd just be fine. It's a bit quaint, it's a bit crappy. But a wedding, I think those windows look <laughs> shit. I, I think you've got to put French doors. Those ones on the top, I don't think you notice. I think if things are getting a bit stressful, it's no surprise. Sarah gave birth to her fourth child three weeks ago, and the lack of sleep might just be taking its toll. It certainly adds a little extra frissons of stress having a three-week-old baby and three other children. And I mind you, in comparison to the house, they're really quite easy. Really? <laughs> Oh, trade them in for the house any time. <laughs> <laughs> like all men, Graham likes to finish one job before starting another. So with his hastily dug pond, now a rather nice landscaped lake, it's time for a family outing to find some fish. Yes, okay. yes. Look, look, look. Yeah. Do you think they've got fish fingers in there as well? <laughs> <laughs> All this fishy business is going right over baby Laurie's head. You're going to catch a fish. OK, come on, everybody, this way. Slowly, slowly, slowly. If we just hold, we just hold it here. What's going on in this net here? Oh, oh, wow. oh. There, there he is. Oh, yeah. There he is. Whoa. Wow. Fishing, boys. <laughs> fish picked. It's off to Rise Hall and their new stately lake. Molly and Theo are going to put the whale in. To call that big, big whale. Oh. <laughs> Come on then. Hang on, wait, listen, stop Everyone it. Everyone give stop, him stop. a kiss. Oh, OK, push him in. Oh, no. hey, off he goes. There he is. Oh, there he is. Look. This is the culmination of Graham's dream, really. It's now, <laughs> it's now not only a pond, but it's stocked with fish. Now he's going to spend many, many evenings trying to get the fish back out again. Honestly, I'm going to get away from the family and come down and pretend I'm fishing. <laughs> or smoking fags or doing something. <laughs> How are you feeling? A couple of weeks later, and Sarah and Graham are once again making the gruelling round trip from London to Rise and back. It's only 6am, but the kids have already been handed over and the grown-ups are off to King's Cross. I think what's really hard is that on a day that long, we actually only get four hours on site. It's sort of frustrating that you have to have such a long day and achieve so little in the middle of it. Oh, and can you write down 3.30, we're meeting that... Um... I've got that down. Shit, Nick Marshall is his name. It's a really tough start, and their day isn't going to get any easier. This is better. Hello. The radiators Sarah ordered months ago haven't arrived. And it's so damp, all the work at the back of the house has had to stop. It's a bit of a disaster. I'm oh. really sorry they've taken so long. Radiators, have you sorted those yet, are they? I'm, I'm in the process of, of discussions about them because they assured me they'd been ordered and would be delivered before Christmas. Yeah. So then I kept ringing every couple of days. I went to the top, top of it yesterday and said, look, all I need to... No. Are the radiators coming yeah, or not? Or not coming? Yeah. Because, to be quite something. honest, yeah. we need some radiators. The worst comes to worst, I'm going to make a decision by the end of the day, yeah. today, and if the worst comes to worst, we'll just go with the original. So I'm really sorry, because oh, <laughs> you only waited for three months patiently with a smile. 
Uh, I've still got the email that says all radiators and bathrooms will be delivered by 28th of October. I know, Guaranteed. I know, <laughs> I know. It's not just the radiators. Today, only half the taps for the back bathrooms have turned up. Hitting the June deadline is looking increasingly unlikely. Right. No. Two arrived and four didn't. Yeah. Bath tank, put the baths on the legs, the legs on the bath, okay. and put the, the waste, overflow so. and the waste on. But obviously, without the taps, I can't put them into oh, the I position. I appreciate it's not ideal. So. Let me just call them right this second and see how quickly we can get all this. They're going to slow you up, mate. Right? It slightly slows up, yeah. But that's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah may be having a slow day at the back of the house, but round the front, Graham and decorator Karen are cracking on with the big paint job. It looks really nice with the white, though. Do you think I should just turn the heating on? Do you think it would make a difference? <laughs> them, them heaters was making a difference, but it's still not working. It just must be really, really cold. You know, the walls are that thick and... Yeah. <laughs> Shut the door. It is hard work. A lot of a lot of decorators won't even tackle it. I don't think. Not not these days. They like the easy, no preparation, straight in, straight out jobs like your Barrett Homes or something like that. You know what I mean? Whereas this, you know, it's a task. It is a task, but it's satisfying. With Sarah project managing from London, Karen tries to keep the boys in line when Miss Beanie's away. But today, Sarah's here on site and unhappy with the lads' lack of locking up. Do they know how to lock them up? Yeah, yeah, she sold them to put the bar across there and leave out that door. And they didn't do it? No, they're not doing it. I'll talk to them. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, no worries. The guys, uh, they left the doors wide open and didn't bother locking up. To add to the tap, radiator and security problems, there's another hitch, the sash windows. There's a lot of windows that are meant to have been done all down that side that are missing, that aren't in. There's a lot of them back in, though. Some are back in. It's those three that are missing on that side, which means they can't do the panelling. Well, it's a bit disappointing, because we... I would have liked the windows to be back in, because that's really going to start holding things up. They can't panel around the windows, they can't decorate. Yeah, not ideal. Too many problems, not enough time. And poor Sarah's already heading back to London. The schedule has slipped massively, but it's probably because it was a completely ludicrous schedule in the first place. Um, and now I'm on my way back home, having left Graham and Rise. He'll stay there the night, because um, he just hasn't got everything done that we need to get done. But um, someone's got to go back to look after the kid. Oh, God, look at me. That's so sad, isn't it? I can't, can't stop yawning. <laughs> Someone's got to go back and uh, take over poor Pam, who's had the kids since six o'clock this morning, and I should think is tearing her hair out now. So I need to go back and let her go home. But I want to see the kids anyway. I can miss them. The list of problems and unfinished jobs at Rise gets longer every day. If Sarah was on site, she might have a fighting chance, but life and family mean she has to project manage from London. Could this be the fatal flaw? He's like an angel. Sarah and Graham have bitten the bullet and taken on the massive job of restoring their crumbling 97-room pile in East Yorkshire. After decades of neglect, they're determined to save the house from falling down and find a way to get it to pay for itself. Their grand plan is to turn Rise into a top-of-the-range wedding venue. Only problem is, they haven't got a clue how to run a wedding. So they're off to the National Wedding Show for some inspiration. How much is it if you take the whole house and the 22 bedrooms I above? can't give you a price for the inclusive of the bedrooms, but to hire us is 7,500 on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday and bank holidays. So, so per night for one For one, one, night. one exclusive night. And then extra for extra the bedrooms? Extra for the bedrooms, yeah. Is it sort of full most of the time? We're, well, we, we do about 150 weddings a year. 
joking. Maybe weddings really could save Rise Hall. Time for a bit of mental arithmetic. But you have to think, that's three weddings a week, isn't it? That's a really fast turnaround. Oh, bloody hell. And 50 times. That could be around a million pounds a year. But if they're going to get anywhere near that kind of money, Rise Hall will have to be a totally top-notch venue. You know, actually, all we need to do is to look around where we are. People take their weddings so seriously. So it's £11,000 for dinner. That's including dinner. the food, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and why? Yep, yeah, drinks package, three course meal, room hire for the wedding breakfast in our main restaurants. How much are the rooms per night if you want to stay on top? They start at £145 bed and breakfast. £145 okay. bed and breakfast. So you're talking Brilliant. about. That's per room. Weddings are a multi billion pound business. At these prices, it's no surprise. When I went to and um, looked at one, which was a hotel, and they had a number of bedrooms, and that was 25 grand for the whole thing, all in. And there was no sort of apology. She was just going 25 grand. Isn't that good value? And I was there going 25 grand. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I should have got married in. I feel like. What do you think? Oh my lord, you look like a. Proper princess. Yeah. I've always, you see, we didn't, we didn't do any of this at our wedding. The usually incredibly practical couple seem to be losing touch with reality. I think if I had never come here, I wouldn't have found some aeroplanes that fly through the sky and and then trail a heart. Oh my goodness! Like that. Really? Yeah. Now that's genius. <laughs> A lot of these places do slightly feel like it is a hotel. It's not like staying in someone you know's house, and that's what we want it to feel, that you're... Someone else's house where the water doesn't work. Well, yeah, but that's part of its charm. And there's charm. a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> but that is, it's that shabby, chic, chic charm. I'm sure they will find hundreds of people wanting to pay through the nose for it. Graham is ever the optimist. At the moment, he and Sarah are the proud owners of a damp, dry rot infested money pit. Back at Rise, the lads are trying to patch up the leaking gym roof, but the weather's not helping. We're taking the old chipboard off the uh, flat roof because when water gets through the green mineral on a, on a chipboard roof, it goes like a Weetabix, all pappy and soft. Checking the joists, making sure there's no rot in the actual structure of the roof. Is it ideal weather for this sort of work? Not really. <laughs> no, it, 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 you can do it in this because you're stripping, and we know that the ceilings below are damaged anyway, so unless it gets too heavy and it's laying, you know, three inches thick, then we'll get out of it and abandon it. And abandon it they will, because this is Britain's worst winter in 30 years. <laughs> it's decided to snow, which is, which is really quite annoying, actually, because... Um, the most of the trucks can't get here. The roofers can't get on the roof because there's so much snow. We were planning on having a lot of people here this, this week. The kids might love the snow, but it's having a massive impact on the budget, schedule and morale. Can we order any bathrooms to the back of the house to keep those guys going? To be honest with you, if you give me half an hour, I can talk to you about the bathrooms at the back of the house and give you a pretty good list. I'm, I'm sitting here. Yeah? I can't stand not making decisions, so I'm, I like to make them. I like to make them quickly and I like to get on. Well, you're going to be sitting there for half an hour doing nothing. Can't guarantee I'll be sitting here for half an hour. Well, I probably wouldn't sit there for half an hour. Either. Where's that list that I gave you of all the bathrooms that we needed? Graham is much more fastidious than me and he makes... He'll take forever making decisions, but they'll always be the right decisions. Uh, and um, what are we going to do about the basin oh, in that room? Second meal. <laughs> so boring. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> so boring. Our bathroom audience only needs to sleep. 
The whole project is grinding to a halt. They may have got the scaffold up, but there's no one on site to use it. It's a disaster. We're trying to sort out a job that's really a two-year job in six months. And if you lose a sixth of that, you know, it's really tricky and we're in, you know, it's just, it's a real pain in the ass. The project was already tough, but the bad weather may have made it impossible. The snow has just, and the cold has just had an effect on, on everything that we've done. It means we can't take the roof off the sports hall, which means we can't get on with that. You know, we've got to do the floor. Everything's got to be done in stages. And on so much of this, we haven't been able to do the first stage. And, you know, everyone will say, well, it's not because of the snow, is it? It's because you're crap. All they can do is wait and hope. But with the forecast set to be the same for weeks, it looks like their dreams for a late spring wedding are on ice. TV property queen Sarah Beanie is taking on the biggest challenge of her life. Trying to save run-down stately home Rise Hall from wreck and ruin by turning it into a top-flight wedding venue, all in just eight months. 30 acres of land. 40,000 square feet, 30 bedrooms, 200 years old. It's been a financial drain on Sarah and husband Graham for years. To be honest, it's been, it's been getting more and more depressing. But unless they act fast, their home will simply collapse into the ground. The first thing I'd probably say if I had turned up here and I was a contributor on property acquisition to bought it, and I'd be right. Sarah is risking her reputation. Failure just isn't an option. I mean, I know I'm incredibly lucky. I still have to get it right. I mean, there's no bottomless pit of money there. Ooh. We can achieve it. Let's hope so, eh? That's we're going to look right, chumps. <laughs> Parts of the 200-year-old hall are completely derelict. This is what happens if you don't use a house. You end up with this. Leaks, damp, fungus and rot. The house is riddled with all of them. I think those windows look f***ing <laughs> It's a huge job on a tiny budget. If this was a National Trust property, you would expect them to be spending about £10 million on this project. Well, we don't even have 5% of that to spend on this. And just when it looked like Sarah and her team had a fighting chance of succeeding, the worst winter in 30 years hit Rise Hall. The sheer scale of this project could easily swallow us whole. Dry rot, wet rot, woodworm, mould, sadly, we've got the lot. 149 windows, 97 rooms. It's terrifyingly huge. Sarah, Graham and the family are up at Rise Hall for Christmas. It's huge fun for the kids, but it's no holiday for Mum and Dad. This was going to be their big chance to kickstart the project. But Father Christmas has delivered a rather unwanted present. A big blanket of snow. This is not the happy new year they wanted. We can't get on with the roof. And because the roof still leaks, we can't get on with the decorating in certain areas. Uh, some of the decorators haven't been able to turn up. We are waiting on a paint order that didn't get through. We're going to have to be running to the finish line. <laughs> Anyone who's managed to make it to work is given a mop to get rid of the melting snow. Oh, it's not the first water it's had on it anyway. With the water off the floor, there's a chance to get some work done. Sarah has to crack the whip and get those who have managed to make it through the snow working. Everyone's pulling together in a desperate attempt to get the project finished on time. I don't think there's so many things that need doing. Where do we start? It's a huge job. There are 97 rooms over two floors. The front of the house where Sarah and the family live is structurally sound but needs some serious refurbishment. In particular, the three main reception rooms will have to impress as they'll be the centrepiece of the hall. So we just fit these two wires and we need to fit a pendant in the middle there. The rear of the house has been a complete disaster zone for years and it's taken two months hard graft to save it from total dereliction. 
Unless they move fast, it could go the way of Trentham Hall in Staffordshire, which was abandoned and eventually completely demolished. Rise needs to start paying for itself if it's to survive, which means transforming the 1970s sports hall stuck on the end of the house into an elegant reception venue. But the snow means it's too wet to work on and the radiators they need to dry the place out can't get onto site. Ooh, it's cold in here. On top of all that, their first real deadline is approaching. Sarah's found a couple mad enough to consider getting married in June, only six months away, and they're coming to inspect the hall for the first time in just a few weeks. What'll happen is that come, you know, February, March, well, you know, if it goes on into February, I mean, we're really in trouble, and I think we'll just have to, we're just gonna have to put the end date back. And, you know, everyone will say, no, it's not because of the snow, is it? It's because you're crap. As they head back to London, it looks very unlikely that they'll hit their summer wedding deadline. As January ends and the snow gradually melts, work finally resumes at Rise. Much needed supplies finally arrive and the lads can get stuck into the leaking roofs. And this week we're making good headway on this gymnasium roof, so that'll please them. No end. By the middle of February, and only four months late, Sarah finds a new, rather more reliable radiator supplier. They're quickly plumbed in, and the whole heating system, even the ancient fireplaces, get a much-needed overhaul. This is the sort of thing that will, will block a fireplace. If you're running a gas fire in a, like a Victorian house, and you don't have a cowl on the top, and you have a bird building this in, Killer. Despite all the good work, the bad weather has put the whole project a month behind. There's only one thing for it. An emergency trip to Rise by Sarah, Graham and the kids to see if there's any way they can get the restoration back on track. Turn the lights off, guys. Oh. What? Poo? No. No, there's no option of poo. Sarah's decision to manage the whole project from her London home is putting a lot of stress on the family. They're swapping holidays for round trips to Rise, and with about a hundred wee stops between London and Yorkshire, it's a very long journey. Are we close to Rise or London? Kind of London, honey. But why don't you go to sleep, and when you wake up, we'll be there. I remember saying, there's no way that we're going to get somewhere that's more than a couple of hours from somewhere else we want to be. I was like, I don't know what happened, actually. I I'm quite sure at what point I lost, lost my senses and we ended up taking on this stupid house. We should have just left it to fall down, didn't we? It's past midnight and everyone is exhausted, but Sarah and Graham have to sneak a peek at the main hall. The decorators have been busy, but will Labini be happy? <laughs> do you like it? Do you like it? What do you think? Do you think it looks pretty, Charlie? Graham's an artist, so he's very picky about the colour choices. That's so lovely. Looks like it's bedtime at last. Too tired to worry about it too much tonight. Looks good, though, I think. <laughs> One room down, only another 96 to go. And they're going to have to work fast, because in just six weeks' time, their first potential customers are coming to look round. Will the happy couple be able to see past the chaos? Sarah, Shit, I think there's a car here. here. Bollocks. Will Sarah get Rise ready in time for their wedding? <laughs> Ten years ago, Sarah Beanie and her husband Graham bought this tumble-down stately home for a song, but it needed floor-to-ceiling restoration. Really, a project like this, it's completely ridiculous to be trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve for the amount we are, in the time scale we are, from the distance we are. But simply restoring the hall won't save it. It's got to start paying for itself. So Sarah has a grand plan to turn Rise into one of East Yorkshire's premier wedding venues. The only problem is she has no idea what this actually entails, or indeed how competitive the multi-million pound marriage market is. Okay. 
But Rise is also Sarah's family home, and it's half term. So if she and Graham want to get any work done, they're first going to have to keep the kids happy. And there's nothing a gang of little boys like more than mud and boats. <laughs> oh no! Driven it onto the bank. Daddy, go get. You're going to have to swim. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Charlie. <laughs> it took ten men, four diggers and one pregnant Sarah to build Graham's dream fish pond. Bet he's wishing they hadn't dug it quite so deep now. Yeah, just what I wanted to be doing in February this, Charlie. What a hero. <laughs> OK, please don't yeah. do that again. Go. Not on the island, honey, not on the island. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No? Don't do that, don't do that. Darling, darling, please don't go in. That's what daddies were made for, is to go no, in to the pond. <laughs> How cold. Don't, don't, don't go right under, cos I'm not sure... With the kids happy, it's time to trudge back to Rise, dry off and try to get the project back on track. We used to come up here at half terms and holidays and have, to be honest, a brilliant time. But now we're coming up and, and it's absolutely imperative that we use that time to achieve an enormous amount because that's our only full-time lump of time that we have to get this project finished. But the bad winter has put them at least a month behind schedule. Work's only just started on turning the back of the house into luxury bedrooms. The gym somehow needs to become a sumptuous reception room, and she needs to fix up the front of the house fast. That part of Rise Hall has been saved from the ravages of damp and dry rot, but even so, its three main reception rooms need to be as impressive as they would have been in their heyday. As these early photographs show, Rise Hall was once packed full of enormously expensive furniture, as the Victorians were obsessed with filling their house to the rafters with a jumble sale of knick-knacks they'd hoovered up from around the Empire. So they've come up with a solution that comes in five litre cans and will hopefully give them that champagne look on a beer-like budget. Graham is an artist and to him, colour is everything. To us, colour is a really, really cheap way of making this house look fantastic. But there's one big problem. The commercial paint manufacturers just don't make the colours that would have been used when Rise was built. So there's nothing for it. Sarah and Graham are going to have to use up more precious time and make their own paints. We're mixing our own colours because we can't find the colours that we want elsewhere and partly because it's really um, exciting to find some of the colours that would have originally been used on the house and so that there's an integrity to it. And the fact is, is that Graham's, well, he's an artist, he's obsessed with colour. But I know he can create the perfect colours, because that's what he does all day. Graham reckons all paint should match, no matter what goes where, and that he can create an entire set of colours that will all match, and by doing so, he believes that their paint will be a striking and central feature which will reduce the need for expensive furniture. Actually, I am a crashing bore about paint anyway. But if you make a mistake in a room like this, you know, we're not talking about, it's not, I can't do it on a Saturday afternoon. It'll be thousands to, to decorate this room. You, you can't afford to make that mistake. So you do, you have to get it right. You have to kind of take it a bit more seriously than you would, because I've spent a few days literally watching paint dry. You know, it's not great. Designing the entire colour scheme for the 97 rooms of Rise Hall from scratch is a daunting undertaking. But if Graham gets it right, it could save them time and money. Get it wrong, and he could put them even further behind. I'm just trying to get a good colour, but a good block of colour, because what we want to do is try and match 
the colour so that we've got a really good oak colour. So we'll see. Am I going to do it with oil paint? There you are. You've got an insight into my life. This is what I do during the day. Mix up paint. Uh, this is, this is, do you know what? I'm not allowed in Graham's studio, he won't let me in there. So um, he goes into the studio and he locks the door. And if I, if I go see him on the studio, I have to knock on the door and he comes out like this. And then locks the door again. So I never go in, so I've never seen him mix up paint, apart from until we did this. What colour does it look like, Billy? What did you say um, to me before? That colour. Yeah, what does it look like? Um, poo colour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't that a little tree? Right, well that's what we were aiming for, we were trying to find poo, so we've done it's brilliant. <laughs> what a genius thing. Put some orange in. That's quite good. This, this is actually just a paint effect here. So this is a base coat and a paint effect. This is all dragging that would have been done with a combing like this. What's funny is that years ago, every decorator would have been able to do that sort of thing. Graham's trying to recreate many of the hall's original colours based on scrapings he's taken from the walls. But he's also got to create completely new colours for the front rooms, all the bedrooms, the corridors and ceilings. He's mixing 45 individual colours in all, and that's not a quick job. But Sarah and Graham can't have their two and a half grand a week decorating teams twiddling their thumbs waiting for design decisions to be made. In a perfect world, you'd be always three weeks ahead of everyone on that site. You'd have all materials and all plans done for three weeks in advance. And there have been times with the paint matching, particularly, where we've been kind of 48 hours ahead of the decorators, and we're kind of like, oh, God. The first big decorating push is on the main stairwell. This is where bride and groom will have their wedding snaps taken, so it's got to look really special. They've plumped for a bold red, which they're going to accentuate with stenciling and gilt plaster work. But have they really got time to fuss over a spot of gold paint way up on a 40-foot high ceiling? We're on a little bit of an indulgence, aren't we? Fortunately, I haven't done any of the bank accounts recently, and if I looked at the accounts, we'd probably stop painting bits of ceiling. But I'll until... Be, um, it'll be half finished. <laughs> The secret of this look is not to be too pernickety. There's nothing to it really, it's, it's what any time save painter and decorator can do. It looks fancy but really it's not. It looks good from down there when you're up close, it's okay. Um, stencil work, any housewife can do with stencil work. The gold paint, the steady hand, the right brush, but you know, it's no problem. Picking out sculptural details in plasterwork was all the rage in Regency times, like here at Beaver Castle in Lincolnshire. The more ornate and complex the paintwork, the higher status the household. And this status decorating extended into the choice of fabrics and furniture. And at Brodsworth Hall in Yorkshire, you can see the full effect. It's what Graham and Sarah would like to reproduce at Rise. In lots of Edwardian and Victorian houses in this country, there's lots of detail that you probably haven't even noticed you've got because it's all painted the same colour and you're not really making the most of it. But if you've carefully chosen the paint colours and a bit of time spent picking it out, maybe not quite so boldly as gold, and that looks sensational. That one that you did, which is the one that you did? Oh. That looks rubbish. <laughs> After six weeks of backbreaking work, the redecoration of the hall is finished. Despite the endless winter delays, they've got one of their key rooms finished. Perhaps they might have that summer wedding after all. I think everything's really good. Actually, do you know, for the first time, I feel as if we're actually going in the right direction now. But, you know, the, scaffolding's come down, and the staircase looks better than I thought it would. It's magnificent enough for a house like this, and it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's ours. We're happy, <laughs> so that's the main thing. In fact, all around, it's been a good trip. Mm, it has been a really good trip. Next one will be really shit. Yeah, we'll <laughs>
Sarah may be an expert with paint and plasterboard, but when it comes to weddings, she's only ever organised one, her own. So she and Graham are on a fact-finding mission to Somerset to meet the owners of Maunsell House, Sir Benjamin and Kirsty Slade. They've spent over a million pounds refurbishing their 13th century ancestral home, and now it hosts around 50 weddings a year. They've got 13 individually designed bedrooms, a ballroom, and can cater for up to 200 guests. And just like Sarah and Graham, Sir Ben and Kirsty restored the whole thing themselves. I call it a library, it's got no books because oh, the slave family are not big into so reading. Lovely. But it's their real chill out room, so they that can just relax. Wonderful. Big squishy sofas. Knowing absolutely nothing about the wedding business, Sarah needs to glean as much information as she can. And Kirsty, the mistress of all things marriage, has kindly agreed to let them in on a few tricks of the trade. And her husband, Sir Benjamin, has some tips of his own in the honeymoon department. Wow, what an amazing bed. Huh. We always put the little welcome letter on the bed for the guests, which is so they see it straight away, which is, is nice. So that's a nice welcome for them. That's a lovely touch. <gasps> Blimey, this, is, this isn't the bed, this is a room. It's six foot six long by eight foot six wide. So it's eight, eight foot six. six. Yeah. This is the size bed I need for us to fit all the children in it. Probably not the point on a wedding night, is it? It's wasted on the bride and groom, really, isn't <laughs> it? It is wasted. It's wasted. I think we can make it personal without it feeling completely invasive. You could leave a signed book on the bed. I could leave people a signed... I could leave people signed photos of me everywhere, <laughs> couldn't I? <laughs> lucky, lucky punters. It's just what, they, just what they need on their wedding night. What's the rope over there? We have a rope here because, basically, some of the people who get married with us are obviously old-fashioned and probably inexperienced and virgins. So we have, um, we sometimes put, if they require, uh, books on <gasps> advice <laughs> and what to do. I um, told you to take those out. And we have to, <coughs> they need these aids, it's the first night. And sometimes there are other aids that we do put in the drawer. They may get into trouble. And so if they do, they have to ring this bell here and a help comes and then we can untie them from the bed or whatever <laughs> and, and the dog barks when he hears the bell and everybody comes and they sort of sort so, things out. So that's, so it's not to just announce that the deed's been done? <laughs> well, maybe it hasn't been done, there's a problem, but we have to help, if, if required, that is. <laughs> Let's face it, Rise's sports hall doesn't look anything like this. So I've done a couple of tables to, to give people different options and different ideas. And there's more to a successful wedding venue than paint and ponds. Behind you is really the Bible, what we work from, which is the running order, all the timings. We've got table plans here. Thank um, you. It's obviously a lot of work it is planning a, lot of a wedding, work, which yeah. is slightly concerning me. So are you planning to meet the brides and grooms and do some meetings yourselves, or are you going to have somebody do that for you? We're a little bit winging it at the moment. The solution is you're going to have to get a really good wedding planner yeah. who's strong and young, who can move tables yeah. and be there and has energy and doesn't mind sort of going to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It really has brought home to me the huge challenge is to fill the gap between the fact we've got a venue and there's caterers, we need someone to tie it all together. And that's going to be key, because we're just too far away and we've got too much on, really. Mm. Back at Rise, Karen, the head decorator, has returned from a week away, and she's not happy. Graham's meticulous attention to detail over the paint colours has been stalling progress. He just needs to pick the colours for the woodwork and the colour for the downstairs ceiling and the stairs underneath. And he's had a whole week and he's not managed to do it. And now we're, we're held up. At the moment, the, uh, one of the biggest problems is Graham can't decide what colours he wants. <laughs> So we have to put half of a light grey and the other half a dark grey and then Graham and Sarah will come up and now we want the different colours on it. So it is a bit frustrating, yeah. Graham's a painter but he paints pictures, not houses. <laughs> There's a difference. 
every man to his own. Let's not do all this time-consuming, fancy work. On the, you know, these are, these are things that I feel they could come back to. There's nothing for it. Poor old Graham's got to make another 200-mile trip to Rise to confirm the right paint colours and head off a potential mutiny. You, you don't seem as stressed or as cross with me as I thought you might be. Are you going to try winding me up so I am? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sarah told me to behave. I sort of understand it's frustrating for her, but that's the nature of doing up a 50 bedroom house when you're living in London and you're trying to get it done here, so it's going to be a bit difficult. The decision to project manage the restoration themselves from their London base may be coming home to roost. Whilst we've got brilliant contractors who are running different bits of the project, there isn't a project manager on site for lots of reasons. One of them is that, you know, to be honest, that's kind of what we do. We're doing it from 200 miles away, which is ridiculous, really, and completely and totally um, traumatic in terms of, of making it actually work. Things like this, when it's nice when Sarah comes up with me as well, so that we can sit down and have a talk about it, and really, when she's in London and I'm here, it's all about me making decisions on my own, which I never like doing, because they're normally wrong. I'll tell you what, if you could make decisions as quick as you can bang babies out, <laughs> <laughs> we'd have the house, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, is that the truth? <laughs> We've had our little mood swings, but we usually laugh it off in the end. We get there. It's all positive um, moaning and groaning. It's not personal. So, you know, it's all about the job. And as long as they're satisfied with the job, you know, they've, they've often swore at me. <laughs> with the Graham and Karen contretemps over, it's time to get back to it. And at last, all the hard work seems to be paying off. But Graham still has colours to find. The back bedrooms need finishing, the miles of corridors are still as dark as pit shafts, and the old gym has all the charm of an old gym. Sarah and Graham are in a classic catch-22. They have to get the work done quickly. But if they rush, they might compromise quality. And anything that isn't perfect could put off picky potential customers. The future of Rise all depends on the next six weeks. Sarah Beanie is trying to save part of Britain's heritage by turning her 97-room Georgian money pit into a top-class wedding venue. But both time and money are tight. I haven't got 10 million, I haven't got 5 million, I haven't got a million to spend on this. In fact, we've probably got less than half of that. Spring has finally arrived and Sarah and her family have headed north for two weeks of on-site work. But first, there's just time for the annual Easter egg hunt. Having everybody up for Easter is fantastic, and it's what this house is all about, filling it with laughter and life and people. And I always love our Easter egg hunt we have up here because it's mad and there's hundreds of children and lots of chocolate. Do you know, the trouble is it just makes me want to have more children, which is not good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> But sadly, it's a very short break this year. We, we need to get on as soon as, as soon as Easter day is over. We need to get back to it this year. Oh, Charlie, darling, how lovely. So after all the eggs have been found, it's back to work. Because in just 24 hours, their first potential customers are coming to look around. But will they be able to see past the wires and unpainted rooms and pick Rise as the venue for their June wedding? We've put the word out to see if we can find someone who, who would be prepared to get married at short notice and commit to, to this building site, and I think we have found someone who might be prepared to do it. Sarah knows that Rise is far from the finished article, but ever the canny businesswoman, she has a sweetener she hopes will swing the deal. I mean, they're not going to be paying us anything. Um, they're going to, to pay for their catering and their flowers and their end side of things, but we're going to give them the house and not charge them for it. 
because it is quite a leap of faith. We're untried and untested as a wedding venue. And the sooner we start weddings happening here, the sooner we can get on with the other endless phases of repair that need to happen. Just because Sarah's giving them the house for free doesn't mean she can cut corners. Bad word of mouth would be disastrous for their fledgling wedding business. So Graham and Sarah need to get the front reception rooms of the house furnished and looking fantastic. For inspiration, they're heading a few miles down the road to the magnificent Brodsworth Hall. Brodsworth is considered one of the finest examples of high Victorian design in the country. Its sumptuous interiors have remained pretty much unchanged for the last 150 years. Sarah and Graham are particularly interested in the main hall and the elaborate paint effects that they'd like to borrow for the reception rooms back at Rise. You've got a number of different things all around this hallway that are simulating different um, types of stone, really, and a lot of this you can see is painted marbling, and actually going through you can see they kind of have a terrific kind of cumulative effect of the, uh, the painted marbling and the scagliola columns, and then the statues are actually real marble on grey, white marble on grey marble bases, so it's, it's a terrific decorative effect so, all the way through. You know, the, the difference, I mean, you've got, what, however many, what, six greens there, you've got two or three reds there. I mean, you've got all the colours of the rainbow and yet it does come together. Yeah, it does. It's wonderful. Was it because they were cheapskates or was it because they wanted it to look like a paint effect? I think they wanted it to look like a paint effect. I think this was a whole style of decoration that wasn't thought of as cheapskate. I think it was fashionable and it was rich and it was, mm. it was an expression of wealth. You can't really tell even when you get close. There is every Real single talent, isn't it? We wanted to come here to really decide on exactly which paint effect we wanted on the columns, and fortunately, uh, they have all paint effects here. I think Sarah thinks it's all a bit Disney. I, I just, I just to think be honest, it's perfect. I, I find it just a tiny bit crude. That's what I love about it, because it's actually, it is a bit ludicrous, I suppose. Fired up by their visit to Brodsworth, Graham has called in specialist decorator Charles Hesp. Together they're going to transform the main hall and the staircase from 21st century bland into a riot of Regency colour. I'm as excited as a child about this. Yeah, isn't that pathetic? <laughs> Charles has worked his marbling magic on some of Britain's biggest buildings, including St Paul's Cathedral. So how does he go about tackling a project like Rise? We make it up as we go along. As Charles transforms the hall with nothing more than a feather, and Graham pushes the rest of the site forward, Sarah's off in search of her own bit of glamour. She's gone to Croydon to get herself a chandelier. is uh, one of the cherubs off of your chandelier, in all honesty. Wow. Don't touch, it's hot. It'll be filed on a bench and cleaned up. Can I make one? Yeah, you can. We'll, we'll get Ray to set you up a little... Uh, yeah. ...a little mould. How hot does this get, then? Uh, it's about 470 degrees C. So that's quite hot. It's quite hot, so be careful. That's it. My dad would be so jealous. <laughs> Go on, just knock it. There you go. Now put it... <laughs> there you go. Look at that. <laughs> now put beautiful. it down, because it'll get quite warm. Well done. There's something fantastically enjoyable about it. I think I really, really need a forge at the end of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Is this ours? Yes, yeah, so that's yours. <gasps> oh, that's very that heavy. gorgeous. This is our drawing. Can I get a copy of the drawing? Yeah, I'll get you a print of that and you Great. can keep that. And that's where this design sort of emanated from over the years. And this is uh, in our catalogue of 1923. Again, you can see that's basically the same design. So how much is this chandelier in 1923? One, uh, 98 pounds. 98 pounds so is a bargain. Bargain, eh? <laughs> It may have cost less than a tonne back then, but today this lighting spectacle is going to cost Sarah three and a half thousand. It's great. Thank good, you. good. Glad it's you're pleased. Mine. Mine. 
Back at Rise, there's a hive of activity. Beds and carpets are delivered. Up go the dusty portraits of owners past. Sarah's focal feature takes pride of place. <laughs> Charles puts the finishing touches to his marble effect masterpiece, all in an effort to impress the bride and groom tomorrow. It's nice to have it feeling like home again. But will it be enough to win them their first wedding? It's 9 a.m. and the wedding couple are on their way. If Sarah can't convince bride and groom Selena and Ben to marry at Rise, all her future plans will go out of her non-existent windows. We've got some people coming to look at the house who might want to get married here. I, you know, I think it looks. Um, I think it looks great. Let's hope that the people today do as well. Um, mm, I was tired last night. What, what do you want on your toast, mm. boys? What is it, honey? Um, oh, yeah, let's not have that. Toast. What do you want then? What are you having, babe? Banana yogurt. You, try and be nice. Sarah, Shit, I think there's a car here. here. Bollocks. Are they out the front? Yeah, I think so. Here, boys. Who wants to eat this toast? I've got to go and talk to Sarah, them. Sarah, you go, and, you go and see them. I'll do the breakfast. May I get that? Yes, you can. It has your face. But nobody wants to look at look around the house with you and your disgusting... OK, come on, let's go. They're here. Will you shut the dishwasher? For Right. That's going to make all the difference, isn't it, the dishwasher shirts? They're not actually going to see the fact that we have a derelict sports hall we're expecting them to get married in. The dishwasher will what? sort it. They're going to see that we don't have... Oh, or... 23 or, um... indoor staff. Come yeah, on, it's fine. Who's going to get married in the... Come on, honey. Will Ben and Selena be able to see past the chaos and kids and plump for rise for their big day? So we've got quite a lot of children. <laughs> I'm Sarah. Selena. Selena. Ben. Hi. How are you Hello. Doing? Nice to meet you. Sorry about our our coaches' yeah. sponsors of children. This is Graham, my husband. Selena. Hi. Hi, Selena. Hi, Ben. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for coming. Yeah. We do know it is a bit of a. Yes, yeah, sorry well, to leave. I would cut the building site. Yeah. Yeah. Eight months ago, Rise was riddled with rot and damp, and on the brink of collapse. It was the last place on earth anyone would want to get married. But Sarah and Graham's efforts to save Rise from extinction and keep it as one of the area's most impressive stately homes are beginning to pay off. The reception rooms are now wedding ready. But it's a different story at the back of the house. A gym full of scaffold, pokey corridors and half-finished bedrooms. Sarah's going to have to use every ounce of charm to cover up for Rise's shortcomings. Just shut the door. So, um, keep the heat. Um, so, yeah, so there's this room, and there'll be maybe a few other bits in here, but this is sort of pretty much how it is. A lot of brides have enormous expectation of what they are hoping for. Just getting into everything now. It's <laughs> oh, great. It's got a new carpet to come on, but it's sort of nearly there. It gets increasingly bad with the back. I love the staircase. That looks yeah, lovely. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me much more concerned about what, whether we're going to be able to deliver exactly what they want, because there's a very kind of high expectation of this kind of fairy tale day. This will have pictures in it. The pictures are still being painted. Yeah, this is a nice light beam, oh. isn't it, in contrast to that one? Mm. How many guests are you? Thinking? About a um, hundred, we think. What they really want is their own special day with their own special house, and that's what we're kind of offering. There's no denying that Rise is certainly special. I'm just wondering if I should get a bottle of milk. <laughs> oh god, now it's supposed to stop here. And if you take the dog away, then you get bonus points. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does look quite bad, but I assure you it's, it's worse. It's just an absolute look. Did you want a dinner dance thing? Um, no, we would. I was thinking like English tea vintage type of theme. Um, so, like that type of. So, seated, not too. Or, yeah, yeah, probably seated areas, yeah. Mm. The ceiling's being tented, so right. it'll look like a sort of bye, the lining bye. is marky, okay. just the ceiling. Oh, right, yeah. And then the lighting is all bye, being bye. done. Obviously, the scaffolding is going yeah. down. <laughs> and oh, the floor down. will be like a parquet floor. Yeah. In fact, you can just oh, see it under down. here. It's yeah. being refurbished. It's actually a wooden floor. You get the feeling that Ben and Selena aren't that convinced by Sarah's sales patter. 
A bit like this, but not like this. Yeah, it won't change. Like a lot of work in eight weeks. Yeah. Sarah doesn't sound that convinced herself. I mean, it is a bit of a leap of faith to imagine it. Mm. But, um, in fact, it's a bit of a leap of faith for me to imagine it. Yeah, I'm not sure that we need to do anything to the sports hall, really. OK, I'm quite sure that we do. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thinking people could dance around the scaffolding. Yeah. Here, let me have that one. <laughs> so Sarah and Graham have given Ben and Selina the grand tour and the big sell, but was it enough to persuade them to tie the knot at Rise Hall? I think looking at the back bit, we were a bit worried, weren't we, thinking that there's only so many weeks till completion. I want to have a lot of contact with, um, obviously, Sarah and the development team just to make sure that it wasn't going to still have scaffolding on, on the actual day. And the actual day is the 19th of June. Sarah's got everything crossed that Ben and Selena say yes. And people might ask, why have you put a date on it? But the sooner we have a wedding, the sooner we can get it ready to have more weddings, the sooner we generate an income, and the sooner this place is restored. With costs soaring and time running out, the restoration of Rise absolutely depends on having this first summer wedding. But Sarah and Graham can do nothing but wait. Their fate is in the hands of Selena and Ben. Sarah Beanie is trying to restore her crumbling country pile and pay for its upkeep by turning it into a wedding venue. A couple of days after showing her first potential bride and groom around a half finish Rise Hall, Sarah gets the call. Well, the great news is that Ben and Selena have agreed to take the house, but we have got an awful lot of work to do, and the last thing I need them to do is pull out. That really would be really bad at this stage. Um, so we've got to get a shift on. The wedding date is set in stone. It's just eight weeks away and there's still a lot to fix and finish. Ben and Selena understandably want to keep an eye on progress as their big day approaches. Next on Sarah's to-do list is the entrance to Rise Hall, if you can call a mud track an entrance. Now we're just driving up towards Rise Hall now. And with any house, the approach is incredibly important. And these are the gates, which are fabulous. Sadly, we don't own them, therefore we can't use them. So now how you approach the house is a different route. So um, the entrance that we use is a little bit further up here. And grand it is. Yeah, this is it. So what we're effectively using at the moment is an old farm track. So somehow what we have to achieve is the same impression that those gates give, but you can't just build a copy of them because a copy of them would be entirely inappropriate within this big setting. So um, that's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Everyone stand well back over there by the saws, those good boys. Again, you stay there till the trees come down. Before they can sort out the drive itself, there's need for a bit of impromptu tree surgery. So Sarah's roped in her brother Dickon to help. He and his junior lumberjacks are clearing the way to what will hopefully be Rise Hall's new wedding winning entrance. Kids, chainsaws, what could possibly go wrong? There you go boys, you can go, grab your saws and you can chop off the branches up the length of it. Very long, hard one. No, but I got it out. The boys, both big and small, are in their element. But they'd better watch out, cos here comes Mum. <laughs> you want to be like Uncle Dick Dick when you get older? Maybe. What are you going to be when you grow up, Nini? Build up. What are you going to be, Billy? Singer. Ooh. I'm going to be... I'm going to be a tree chopper down. <laughs> That's called a lumberjack. Trees down, entrance cleared, the brickies move in. And in no time at all, Rise has its very own set of breeze block pillars. They may need a bit of work before the wedding day. Getting wed is a serious business, 
and for Rise to be a fully-fledged wedding venue, they need a license from the local registrars. They're responsible for the legal and civil side of getting married. So today, Sarah, Graham and other wedding venue owners are attending a very important meeting where their official responsibilities are being laid out. So to go on to um, the next item on the agenda, which was the licensing process. Yes, the wedding license. The singularly most important document you need if you want to hold a wedding on your premises. But we have had a couple the document you'd imagine a stickler for detail like Sarah would have sorted out a long time ago. I've got a tiny weenie crisis at the moment because I sort of didn't get around to organising the wedding licence. And consequently, if you haven't and the couple cannot be married... I just assumed you you filled in a form, sent them a cheque, they came and looked at it and said yes or no, that's the end of that. No, it's not that simple. Um, if we receive objections uh, via the advert or from the fire service, these are investigated by someone we call the Proper Officer for Registration Matters, rather a wordy title. So anyway, it's now sort of more complicated, and if I'm honest, I spent all week thinking I must do that flipping application for a wedding, um, and I haven't done it. To be safe, we do need that three-month window at least in order to be able to process your application in time. More than that, if you can possibly give us that. Sarah and Graham have sacrificed a lot to restore Rise Hall, and all their hard work is finally paying off. But one tiny administrative oversight could bring all their plans crashing down. If Sarah and Graham don't get the wedding license, both their and the bride and groom's dreams will be in tatters. Sarah Beanie is in the final stages of the biggest project of her career. Saving her 97-room crumbling stately home by turning it into a top-class wedding venue, all in just eight months. 30 acres of land, 40,000 square feet, 30 bedrooms, 200 years old. It's been a financial drain on Sarah and husband Graham for years. The first thing I'd probably say if I had turned up here and I was a contributor on property, I'd decision to bought it, and I'd be right. Dry rot, infestation and Britain's worst winter have all been overcome to bring about an amazing transformation. The first time I feel as if we're actually going in the right direction. Now the race is on to finish the restoration in time for Rise's very first wedding. We don't have enough money we need or enough money. time. But the bride and groom are still very anxious. It wants to be looking a bit better on the day of the wedding. <laughs> and failure is unthinkable. But Sarah has made one important administrative oversight. I sort of didn't get around to organising the wedding licence. There's so much at stake, but time is running out. I'm really nervous about tomorrow. The sheer scale of this project could easily swallow us whole. Dry rot, wet rot, woodworm, mould, sadly, we've got the lot. 149 windows, 97 rooms. It's terrifyingly huge. Sarah and Graham have been hard at work throughout the Easter holidays, trying to get as much done before the kids have to get back to school. Oh, that's looking great. Sarah's made a lot of promises to the bride and groom, and now she's got to keep them. In two months' time, she has to give them the best day of their lives. The sooner we have a wedding, the sooner we can get it ready to have more weddings, the sooner we generate an income, and the sooner this place is restored. Reputation is everything in the wedding game. Bad word of mouth could kill their fledgling business. They've got to get everything right. Rise is made up of 97 rooms over two floors. Its front third, where Sarah and her family stay, was sound but needed serious refurbishment. Now its three main reception rooms, including the entrance hall where the wedding will take place, are as impressive today as they would have been during its heyday. The wedding reception is due to take place in the sports hall, a remnant of Rise's days as a convent school. 
Right now, this is the last place you'd want to celebrate getting married. So somehow, Sarah needs to turn it into an amazing function room. It's like an, a sort of ugly monster on the end of the house that's sort of waiting to be dealt with. The plan, as always, with Sarah is ambitious. The 70s safety glass windows are due to be replaced with elegant French doors, and the austere brick walls need to climb with pretty plants rather than algae. At last, this shitty sports hall is about to get a facelift. Um, I'm about to jet wash off 20 years of mould from the inside, and we're finally going to make some progress with it. OK, cool. This is spring cleaning on an industrial scale. Sarah's got herself a pressure washer that's normally used to remove graffiti and make short shrift of the decades of grime and slime. But this is just the first step in turning the old sports hall into somewhere a bride and groom might consider having their reception. But the big issue with the gym was always the windows, and Sarah's just found out the company that was due to do the work can't deliver in time, literally leaving a huge hole in her plans. It's turning into a nightmare, these windows in Sports Hall, I have to say. In fact, the whole Sports Hall, I quite wish someone had just blown it up. <laughs> The idea was to have floor-to-ceiling doors that would open out onto a beautiful patio where guests could enjoy the view while knocking back cocktails. We need to find a different company. They were doing us quite a good deal. They were doing us, a, and yeah. We, I think they worked out that they couldn't do the deal that they were offering to do for us, and that means that we don't have enough weeks left to do all the things that we do want to do. It's so, a bit, to be honest, that's this the first... is a real headache. If they can't find a new firm to manufacture and fit the windows in the next eight weeks, they'll have to stick with what they've got, which isn't a pretty thought. I'm worried about them actually coming in, you looking mean... at the whole thing together and going, I don't want to get married in a 1970s school sports hall. Now they're really up against it. There's an endless list of jobs to do, and this is the last thing they need. It's enough to make lose the will to live. Sarah and Graham's dream was not just to save 200-year-old rise from dereliction, but to restore it to its former glory. To give it back the swagger and style it once enjoyed. So their plan is to create three very special bedrooms. Two will hark back to Rise's past, they'll be in Regency and Victorian styles, and one will be cutting edge and contemporary. They're kind of the main big periods of this house since it, it was built. It was built in the Regency times, and, and then there's the Victorian period that it, it, it's lived through. And then we have felt it was important to have a room that would have reflected design today. So, um, and they're probably going to be in those styles. I have to say, they're probably not going to be that accurate because we are actually going to have fitted plumbing, which they would mm. have had in the Regency times and other luxuries. The bride and groom, Ben and Selina, will choose one of the period rooms as their bridal suite. The other two will be taken by their respective parents. So it's crucial that Sarah and Graham make them the most outstanding bedrooms in the house. I'm really worried about Selina and Ben being a bit disappointed with it as well. It's a really important day in people's lives, and yeah, I feel really crap if they turn up and walk away being disappointed with it. But so far, they've only managed to get some paint on the walls, and what with their French window worries, it's going to be touch and go if they get the rooms ready for the big day. That's, of course, assuming Sarah manages to get a wedding license. She's finally completed all the paperwork and got it in the post, but before Rice can get the full licence, it'll need to be inspected and approved, and at the moment, Rice is a bit of a building site. Things aren't in place and I still yeah. can't sign the licence. Sarah Beanie has six weeks left to save her 200-year-old money pit by transforming it into a top-class wedding venue. That stop date has to be met. Um, and so we will have a wedding on the 19th of June. Turning Rise Hall from a family home into a business is going to be tough. 
For the last decade, the house has been a refuge for Sarah and her family from the hustle and bustle of city life. But they all know that things are going to have to move on if the hall's going to survive. I love coming up to the house, and I always in my head imagined that we were going to live here full time, um, and this was going to be our home. It's kind of weird to have moved on from that point where I was absolutely convinced this was only going to be our family home and we would be here full time. Now that private dream is over, Rise has to start paying for itself. Graham and Sarah need to finish the work on the sports hall and bedrooms before the wedding deadline of the 19th of June. But in a couple of days, they've got to ship the kids back to London, so they've got to crack the whip. <laughs> You'll never, ever go to natural queen. <laughs> The bride and groom are due to look round in a couple of weeks, and if there's been no progress, there's a real chance they'll cancel. One of Rise's big selling points should be the period bedrooms. They've done great things with the paintwork, but no one knows how these rooms would have been furnished back in the 18th century. So they're stealing some time for an inspiration trip to the magnificent Beaver Castle in Lincolnshire to borrow some ideas. Totally splendid, isn't it? Well, you were looking for a, a Regency castle. You can't get better than this. No, this is completely glorious. Um, <laughs> this was uh, rebuilt this after is... the fire by the fifth Duchess. Um, she'd spent her honeymoon in France, and after the fire here, she said to her husband, I want a room just like the one we stayed in. So bless him, he went back to France and bought the room. See, if you really loved me, that's what you'd do for me. Yeah, you well, I was going to warn you about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have far too many children for me to be able to afford a room like this. <laughs> so mean. But it's the bedrooms that Sarah and Graham have really come to see. Regency decor was inspired by Greek and Roman antiquity, and swathes of silk and floral brocade were all the rage. Hey, this is the sort of detailing. It's things like that that we need to look at. Yes. And also, what's interesting about this is you can actually get away with quite cheap material if you get the trimmings right. But getting this look on their budget won't be easy. The Regency period, like the man that gave it its name, the Prince Regent, was all about excess and extravagance. The prince liked the finer things in life, as Sarah and Graham are about to find out. This is the Prince Regent's bedroom. Now, that's a bed and a half, isn't it? That's exactly right. the plan for the bed. Again, with the Prince Regent's favourite colour, hence the gold. Is yeah. it a waterbed? No. Well, that's <laughs> bouncy. <laughs> that's just so comfortable, it's lovely. This is tremendous. All our beds have to be this high. Um, but as, the... as well as fancy fabrics, the prince liked fine dining too. A special big belly shaped hole had to be gouged in the corridor between his bed and bathroom. This is a tummy hole. It is. That's great, isn't it? It, it was there for you, but you just had a child <laughs> too early. <laughs> in terms of feel, this is pretty much what we're trying to achieve, which is this wonderful opulence, but feeling like you can just sit on the sofa and have a chat. I think that's so great. <laughs> Graham and Sarah are back at Rise and buzzing with ideas from their trip to Beaver. First on Sarah's to-do list is a super-sized Regency-style bed. But there's no money for antiques, so it's time for a bit of DIY, which is made so much easier by her army of little helpers. Who's going to come and hold this for me? Up a bit, Ralph. Thanks. So bring it back this way. Thank you, honey. Such a pain. <laughs> Running out of money, you, know, you have to get um, labour where you can. So I don't have to pay you any money to help me. Really? Completely free. How about kids? Yes. Oh my God! I, I get I get paid. Blimey, that's brilliant. I charge yeah. um, a pound. Oh, you do? A pound for how long? Um, all for my life. <laughs> a pound for your whole life? 
<laughs> yeah. like, that's on camera, isn't it? Flipping excellent. Come 18, Billy, you'll do the washing up. <laughs> Forever. Never. Never. You haven't done a bad job of that. <laughs> You're so rude. <laughs> Quite high. I didn't realise it was so high. <laughs> 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 um, oh no! Yeah. The big bed is too big. <laughs> so while Sarah heads back to the drawing board, the lads make a start on the modern contemporary bedroom. This sleek, minimalist look relies on keeping it simple like using large pieces of reconstituted granite around the bath, which will be in the bedroom. It is a real luxury suite. It's something I've been wanting to do for ages, put a bath in a bedroom. I, I don't think it's something that you want, you'd really want to live with all the time, but I think in the context of this house, it seems a shame not to have. But time's up. Sarah and Graham have got to get the kids back to London, leaving the trades to get on without them. So all the other businesses we're involved in will be imploding while we're up here. But the site moves on much better, which is great. Not that we haven't got some hiccups on their way, I'm sure. And there's an awful lot to do. While the family hurtle down the M1, the bride and groom are back at Rise for an inspection. Graham and Sarah have decided not to charge them for the venue hire, as they see this first wedding as a test run for Rise. Selena and Ben are still spending a small fortune, so they want to see real improvements from their last visit. Oh, my God! Mind yourself. Mind that board. Yeah, and the wire. Yeah, it definitely needs some work. It's a bit of a scare factor, isn't it, Danny? Yeah, some nice exposed brickwork. <laughs> Should we be worried that there's bricks coming out the wall? So We're not using yeah. this room, though, are we? Well, I don't Surely. know. I don't... Cabinets the here. corridors might need some work, but at least the yeah. bedroom should take their breath away. Wow. <laughs> it's looking very um, interesting. It's a lot different than last time we saw it, but I don't know if it's any better than last time we saw it. No, it's worse. <laughs> so why is the bath in the bedroom? Pass. And what about the old sports hall, the venue for their posh reception? Oh, no scaffolding. Oh, wow. So this room is huge. Isn't it? This room needs loads of work still. Even though it's done loads, we still need to ask about all the work that is going on in here. That didn't quite go to plan. Obviously, with Graham and Sarah, they have done a very lot in a short space of time, but we've got five weeks. It is our wedding and we need it to look perfect. I've dreamt about this day for ages, so I'm going to be ringing them more constantly, sending out emails, checking on things. And good to her words, Selena's straight on the phone to Sarah in London. I think the main thing that was, I mean, obviously it's great that there was no scaffolding in the um, sports hall. No, that's he a good... still concerned about the ceiling um, yeah. and the windows, so he says that would be what he wants to know if that's when that's getting finished. Now, week by week now, you'll see big strides forward, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> It's all very real, isn't it? <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, it is actually her wedding day. I've never really, I've only ever done building projects, and with building projects, you kind of think, well, we'll get it done, that'll be fine. I kind of, you know, it's, it's a really big deal, someone's wedding day. Before Sarah can focus on the details of the wedding, she's got to get the major restoration work finished. So there's only one thing for it, an emergency dash up north. In these last few weeks, all the effort's going into the back of the house, where the guest rooms need to be finished. But this is the part of the house that was in the worst state, and without all Graham and Sarah's efforts, it may well have gone the way of one and a half thousand stately homes that have been lost in the last hundred years. Now structurally sound, these rooms still need a lot of work if they're going to accommodate 60 guests in five weeks' time. When will you be out of these three rooms in this corridor? Probably Thursday next week. OK. It's that tricky time in any build project. With deadlines looming, Sarah and Graham have to ask the workforce to redouble their efforts. Pushing too hard could cause even more problems. I tried to push them on the other day a little bit, and I didn't do it without pissing them off. 
I might like something to take two days, but actually it needs to take three or four because they're not prepared to leave a substandard product behind them. With such a rush on, all the trades are getting on top of each other and understandably people are getting stressed. There's that many things going on in the back half of the house. And I think they'll be pushed to get it done. Sorry, but now I'm starting to panic, you know, and, and if they're not, they should be. Um, but you need to talk to us about stuff anyway. Yeah, at some point, yeah. I'm going to have to have some deadlines, really, you know, picks. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we haven't been... I mean, it's not only Karen and Steve who are getting tense. After their early start and hectic day, Sarah and Graham are starting to feel the pressure too. We've got a problem. Well, slightly, I spent 25 minutes looking for you because you didn't answer your I've just found it. It fell off in here. Oh. I'm glad you spent 25 minutes looking for me. Yes. You could have done it before lunch, couldn't you? In our, in our three and a half hours at Rise today. Anyway, to be honest, this wouldn't be possible I don't... Well, I wouldn't be able to do this on my own without Graham. There's absolutely no way in hell I could do it on my own. I'd like to think you can do it without me, but maybe you can do it better without <laughs> me. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, quite f***ing not. With whom? Me. I don't even think we'd have bought the house without you, so I don't think we need to worry about it. Domestic over. There's just time for some TLC for the workforce. Are you a bit worried about the five-week deadline, then? A bit? Are you a bit? But for a normally ice cool Sarah, that's not the easiest of prospects. For years I've been involved in developing property and I've always said it's either your home or it's a business and it's a development. And with this, it is a home and it's a business. And that makes for an awful lot of problems. <laughs> The workforce may be a bit happier, but there's still one big stumbling block, the lack of a wedding licence. So ten days later, Sarah's back up north to meet the local registrar and safety officer. If they don't approve the venue, there'll be no licence and no wedding. To make matters worse, Sarah's forgotten another bit of essential administration. They're wanting the uh, liability insurance, which I've got a copy of here and they're wanting the letter from the fire officer, which I've got here as well, to say that they're happy with it. Oh my God, I just realised there's something else they're looking for, which I haven't done. They're looking for the risk assessment as well, which I meant to download and complete. Not a great start. But uh, they'll be fine. Do you want this room? to be on the list as well. Yeah, this yeah. one. So this is the entrance hall. Yeah. Um, and I'd say um, you could have, I'd imagine that you could have 200 here. 200 is quite is tight. Yeah, I, I, I would have thought that's tight, Sarah. Really. Okay, how many do you think? I think about 60 odd. I promise it won't. <laughs> In four weeks <laughs> time. Four weeks time. Yeah, I, 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 trust me, you have to trust four me, weeks. it will be fine. I know you don't believe me, but it will be fine. And there's a door going on there, so... Um... A licence can't be granted yet. The inspectors will be back on the 14th of June, five days before the wedding. Because I know you said about fire extinguishers and signage, and so, I'd, uh, you know, I yeah. would like to sort of see that in... In place, in yeah, yes, yes. OK, so, well, um, they'll yeah. be kind of quite yeah. close to the end. Yeah, so I can't sign any um, licence off. She'll need to prove that she's complied with all the health and safety requirements, such as... All exit routes shall be maintained with non-slip and even floors. Such exit routes shall be unobstructed. All exit doors shall be available for immediate use without use of a key or similar fastening. All fire doors shall be maintained effectively. If she doesn't, the wedding will be off and Rise's future will be in jeopardy. Sarah Beanie is in a race against time to complete the restoration of her crumbling country pile in time for its very first wedding. Ultimately, this house doesn't stack up as a project. It, it would cost more to refurbish than it would ever be worth. But if we can give it a way of making an income and that income can be spent on continuing to, to restore it, then it, it sort of justifies it existing, really. They started the restoration project eight months ago, but now there are only three working weeks left before the wedding and there's still a heck of a lot to do. 
So Sarah and Graham are back up at Rise for one final push, but with the kids in tow, the house has to take second place to family life for a few hours. <laughs> See if you can make it look really pretty. I like doing this because it looks like yellow poo. Stop it, your monkey. Put some on half of it and then let Charlie do some. <gasps> it does look amazing, guys. What a beautiful cake, boys. Did you make that? Yeah. Ready? This has been such a happy place for us. It's from the minute that we first saw it, we knew that it was going to be a lovely home. And despite the fact it's big, it's still a lovely home. This is the last holiday the family will spend at Rise before it opens for paying guests. It won't any longer be a private home, but it's the only way to ensure the whole survival. Celebration's over, Sarah and Graham get back to work. Grinders grind and rollers roll. The bedrooms need beds. The sports hall needs windows. The entrance gates need to be rendered. And there's still no wedding license. One of Graham and Sarah's big ideas is to create three period bedrooms. But their Victorian room is tricky, as this era stretched over 60 years. These pictures of Rise show how much they liked heavy fabrics, big frame mirrors and dark wood furniture. Oh, I've forgotten about that. The nicest was given to us by um, Sarah's father. Luckily, Sarah and Graham have been collecting this type of furniture for years, and anything they haven't got, they should be able to pick up cheaply at auction. It's not bad. This good old Victorian slab of wood was about 400 quid in auction. So. You want to be careful when you try and recreate a, a period of the past, not to... You, you, don't, you, don't want to, you want to just take the best bits, really, and pull those forward. One of the best bits of Victoriana they have is this imposing walnut bed frame. Right, I've got to remember how this went together, haven't I? The bride and groom have chosen the Victorian room as their bridal suite. So Graham and Sarah's brother Dickon, who's here to lend a helping hand, better make sure the bed is good and sturdy. I know we'll fix it. If you all just stand here staring yeah. at it. <laughs> we don't need no, to fix that's it. Quite well done, boys. A tiny bit worried it's a little bit rocky. Victorian furniture has fallen out of fashion lately, so you can pick it up for a decent price. This wardrobe was 350 quid and the chest of drawers was 200. And with a bit of TLC, they should last another 100 years. It's important that the Victorian room is in keeping with the rest of the house, as Rise is a Grade 2 star listed building. That puts it in the top 6% of listed buildings in the UK. Sarah and Graham have worked hard to keep their restoration sympathetic to the house's history. They've taken a lot of advice from their local conservation officer, Edward Atkinson. With 40 years experience, there isn't much that Edward doesn't know about Regency houses, so will he be impressed by all the work at Rise? I wouldn't say no, forget it. But on the other hand, I think it needs to be very sensitively mm. done, very lightly done. They don't, well, they don't when you find somebody like Sarah who is wanting to retain its integrity, they are few and far between. Yes, have you repainted this? I don't yes. remember it being this colour. No, it no was, it's it much was... better, isn't it, this lovely terracotta? If so it had it not a... been for them, I think this building would now be in a parlour state where one might not have been able to save it. Edward's really pleased, and that's down to a big team effort. To pay tribute to their workforce, artist Graham has decided to immortalise the decorators, plumbers and roofers who've made all the difference in a series of pictures that he's going to hang in Rise Hall's new gallery. It's a real joke to them and to me, you know, this is my day job. This is what I do five days a week. What will the team think of Graham's efforts to capture their inner beauty? The problem was that you had a bloody beard when I did you. Yeah. 
I have, really, isn't it? It's amazing. You got all my wrinkles as well. Well, you know, Jeff. <laughs> have to do that sort of thing. They yeah. look good. They are good. Karen and I aren't so pleased with Karen's <laughs> voice. Have a good look. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's like crown watch. I'd just like to say we all looked a lot younger before we started this yeah. project. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's someone working feverishly to get Rise ready for the wedding. Oh, God. We're getting there. Although, I do think that and then turn around and see something and think, oh, God. In the old sports hall, they finally found a company whose beautiful doors will transform it into a fantastic reception venue. The race is on. But with just five days before the wedding, have they done enough to convince the local authority to give them the all-important wedding venue licence? My big, big worry is what happens if the wedding licence doesn't come through? We're really stuffed then. I can probably fix everything apart from not actually having a wedding licence. Sarah needs to prove that even though there's still some last-minute work to be done, Rise is now a safe place for Ben and Selena's wedding. Right. A bit better than last time, I'm hoping, you think. How many chairs do you think you... Here, we've got um, six wide, yeah. but you Four can fit there. eight wide. So I think with 120 in this room, you'd feel quite... It will in, be but... quite snug. <laughs> it's getting there, isn't it? Yeah. It's better. Yeah. But has she done enough? Yeah, I'm satisfied now that Sarah's met all the requirements and I can go back to the office and sign off the licence now. We now officially have a wedding licence for Rise Hall. So we are now open for naming ceremonies, weddings and uh, civil ceremonies. I've been quite pleased with myself about that. And uh, pretty happy. Thank flipping goodness is what I say. There's no time to relax, though. The feature bedrooms still need finishing. Sarah and Graham have had a Regency-style bed made out of MDF by Greg the Carpenter, all for the princely sum of 200 quid. There you go. Pauline the Curtain Lady adds Sarah's carefully designed coronet and drapery to make it fit for the Prince Regent himself. Sort of not going over the top, but trying to keep it elegant without it looking too sort of tacky, really. The contemporary room's bath is all plumbed in and they've stuck to the minimalist look by furnishing it with, well, not much, really. And in the Victorian room, Pauline's worked her soft furnishing magic again. It's now a fantastic bridal suite. Oh, Pauline, these are amazing. Fantastic, isn't it? I just need to alter the, push the rail back and make it look a little bit. It does look as if it's a curtain from a brothel, doesn't it? Which is, Which that's is what, perfect. That's what we were looking for. Because, to be honest, the best bit of Victoriana is the brothel side of it. Probably not for them at the time, but, but looking back. Let's hope the bride and groom like the brothel look. Beautiful. It's the day before the wedding and Rise is a hive of activity. Swarms of people have arrived to make the final transformation. An awful lot of random people that I have no idea who they are walking around my house today. Bride and groom Selena and Ben have turned up nice and early to make their final arrangements, only to find a queue of people waiting to get into the sports hall. Or as it's now known, the orangery. The door's broken. Yeah. How long does it take to get all these things? Well, it takes about half an hour to an hour just to get the tables and chairs in place. Right. I was really calm when I arrived and I seem to be having my temperatures escalated now because it, it's crunch time. Everyone's here ready and waiting. We were not actually moving anywhere because we're still waiting for the floors to dry and things. Fortunately for Selena, Sarah's seen sense and hired Di, an experienced wedding planner, to help organise all the finer points of the big day. How long before you think this will harden off so we can obviously get some tables plates? Um, about another 10, 15 minutes, do you think? Yes. At that it, far it end? Be, it has to be bone dry, yeah. Yeah, exactly. OK, we may have to go over it just because we've obviously got some things to do with it, but that's, that's fine. Okay. So okay. 10, 15 minutes, you're okay, a star. Thank you. thank you. 
it's very chaotic. Lots of people coming and going. There's lots of people I haven't seen. Lots of places I haven't been to, but uh, it's uh, a bit manic. There's still a lot to do. There's lots of dust everywhere. And uh, hmm, we'll get there, I'm sure, but I think it might be a late night. <laughs> but where's the boss when you need her? Sarah's dashed down the drive to supervise the rendering of her grand new entrance gates, which she hopes will look vaguely impressive by tomorrow morning. I just think it would have been such a shame for the bride to come up the, up the road in a horse and carriage to some breeze block pillars. It's got a little bit the moment somewhat. <laughs> anyway, it's not going to be a problem. It's going to look beautiful because Dean's going to be here till midnight and I need to get him a slab of beer. Things are a little more ship shaped back at the house. Eight months ago, the back bedrooms were uninhabitable. Now, remarkably, they're ready for their first guests. Sarah and Graham have dragged themselves away from their last-minute scrambles to show Selena and Ben the three themed rooms which are finally finished. When they last saw them four weeks ago, they looked like this. So what will the happy couple make of them now? Wow. This is wow. not what I was expecting. This is amazing. This looks completely different. Yeah, it? it's, good, it? it's got character. This looks phenomenal. Is this the Arabian princess room, this one? <laughs> but yeah, the Regent's bedroom. Regent's bedroom. This, this is, is um, This is a room that wasn't quite finished last time. Wasn't yeah, it? But it's more, it's better it than last time though. Yeah, it, it is, is better than last time. It's a lot different than last time. And it's huge. But the most important room for Selena is the Victorian room, as she's chosen it for her bridal suite. Oh, wow. It's so cute. That's amazing. That isn't bed it? is amazing. I'll have all my bits and bobs out here, I should think. Well, that seems to have gone down well. Elsewhere, glasses are polished, flowers arranged, and chairs are dressed. Rise is being transformed into a wonderful wedding venue. And now, save for a last few minute adjustments by the hosts, there's nothing left to do but hope. Do you know, it's been kind of a really great day today. I've really enjoyed it. But I'm really nervous about tomorrow. It's June the 19th, 2010. After eight months of hard work, Rise is finally ready for its big day. What was once a leaking, near derelict shell is now as impressive as it was in its heyday. The reception rooms would have made the Bethels, the original owners of Rise, proud. The 32 bedrooms have been completed, and even the old sports hall is now worthy of its new name, the Orangery. It really is a testament to a lot of hard work. But today's the big test for Sarah and Graham. They don't know anything about running a venue. And even though they've hired wedding coordinator Di, there's still a long list of last minute fixes. The wedding party is due to arrive in a few hours, so they better get their skates on. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna move the car. The bins are here. I'm going to hide the rubbish in a, I don't know, someone's car or something. Cause you're sweet. Um, and then, um, and then I'm going to put the fire extinguishers around. Did I put any makeup on this morning? Do I look really f***ing old? And I'm going to put some makeup on. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Rise is in the middle of nowhere, so Graham needs to get the freshly painted signs out to the entrance or the guests could drive past oblivious of where they're meant to be. Didn't think about the bloody wind. Dean came in at six o'clock this morning to scratch these down. Bloody hell. It's not as if we haven't all been up at till two or three in the morning all the, this week anyway. Leaving things, cutting things a bit fine. Back at the hall, everyone is busy with the finishing touches. But amidst all the activity, the reality of what is happening at Rise is just hitting Sarah. I just, I've been, to be honest, the only way I've been able to quite cope with the concept of, of renting this house at is in my head thinking, Everything will be locked and it'll be fine because no one can get in any of the bits that I really care about. Right now, I can't lock anything up and I'm going to get a little bit stressed in a minute. Um, 
Now all she has to do is work out which key locks which of the 97 rooms. Also, I've renamed all the rooms into witty and amusing names in the last week, which means I don't know any of the names, room, names of the rooms. I look like I'm some sort of obsessional weird key fanatic, don't I? <laughs> no one will get in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't get out. <laughs> Shall I just show you the side? You can see. This, this is why I'm locking this room. There we are. I don't need to speak, do I? Should we just shut the door, Ray? And we'll just lock it up. But Sarah's lock fetish has backfired. I think I might have locked it with an only locking, not unlocking key. Sarah seems to have locked the door to, to the office, which has everything that I need to put all the signs up, my drills, my screwdrivers, tighten up things. Pretend it's me. No, Leave it and Thomas it. and Jeff to sort that out. Brilliant. At least there's one door that's properly locked. Have you done finish to. locking that because you need to lock it? Okay. <laughs> oh, come on, old man. The wedding party is on its way. Sarah and Graham have just got time to smarten themselves up before they have to play host to Rise's first wedding. And the bride's in a flap. Where we get right, so we're going to the mum's room now. Yeah, I'm really impressed. I'm glad everyone's here. Hair and makeup's here, so I'm all good. I don't care about anyone else. They're in the rooms. I need to get ready. Is she decent? No, let me just get you. Okay. I'm just getting my outfit on. We're getting ready. Oh. Just. Who said a nice Thank you very much. No Thank problem. You for that. Mm. Excellent. Mm. This is the preparation gown for the outfit. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we can crack that open. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? So, yeah. How are you feeling? Not bad. Yeah, yeah. all right. All right, that's a all good right. thing. Yeah. <laughs> You're only meant to feel all right. Good morning. Good to see you. But as the bride and groom get themselves ready, Graham realises there's a problem. Ben and Selina have brought five extra overnight guests who haven't been booked in. Now, the problem is, is I'm a fire marshal. I need to know exactly who's in the house, or else, legally, I'm There's nothing Graham can do but go and confront Ben. Luckily, the groom is getting changed in the bathroom, so it's the best men who get both barrels from Graham. Yeah. I don't really want to hassle Ben with this now. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah. we should have known yeah. about this a week ago. And if anybody else is going to come up and say, I'm expecting to stay. Yeah. I need to know yesterday. Right. Okay. That's them told. I hope it went okay. What I don't want to have to do is to be shoehorning piss people out of the door with them calling me every name under the sun. But you know, fire is the thing that we have to take more seriously than anything else. The wedding is now just minutes away. The guests are waiting expectantly in the ceremony hall. A horse and carriage stands patiently on the driveway, but there's no sign of the bride and groom. Just, someone just walked past, they look really pissed off. I thought, God, they think we're making it delay or something. Has someone had second thoughts? Has Sarah's key obsession got the better of her and she's accidentally locked them in? Has Graham upset the groom? What the heck is going on? Sarah Beanie is staging Rise's very first wedding. The ceremony hall is full of excited guests, but the bride and groom have gone missing. We meet in the carriage and walk. Fortunately, it's just down to the registrars taking their time with the bride and groom's pre-wedding interviews. You can't hurry the law. I can't believe we've got all this building work done and then the registrars take long we're late because of that. Actually, that's not very fair, is it? They've been very nice. At last, Ben takes his place, and Selina arrives in her horse-drawn carriage. That feels like quite an achievement. That just looks so amazing. It's just as well I dressed up for the part, isn't it? I was going to be a bit better than this. just didn't get round to it. I'd marry you again, old man. It's the day they thought would never come. 50 workers, 10,000 man-hours, 
3,000 tins of paint, 32 bedrooms, eight months of hard work. The restoration nightmare has turned into a dream. We haven't got any daughters, so it'll never be like this for us. Oh, it's such a relief. We'll be able to be there. You'll have bought a different house by then, trying to do the same thing to that, won't you? A bigger house. Yeah, <laughs> got rid of this silly little cottage. <laughs> do you promise to love and respect her? Be honest and faithful to her from this day forward? I do. OK. Selina, do you take Benjamin to be your partner for life? I do. It gives me the greatest of pleasure to declare that you are now husband and wife together. Ladies and gentlemen, I think a round of applause. Here's to the future of Ben, Selina and Rise Hall. Right, well, I'd call that seamless myself. Thank you. <laughs> All of it looked so romantic, didn't they? Actually, lovely. I didn't see very much. I was having a cup of tea. Oh, Graham! Please greet your bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. <laughs> well, even talking to Graham and Sarah earlier about the uh, the work they've done over the last few days and getting stuff ready for today, even the little finishing touches which they couldn't finish, I've not no I've not noticed anything no. wrong. People were a bit concerned when I said, oh, we're getting married in a stately in a home renovation. that's not even been renovated. And it's just gone so beautifully, and I couldn't have asked for a better wedding day. It's been a big day for Sarah and Graham. After all, it's not every day you hold a wedding in your own home. But there was a lot of things that could have gone wrong, and, and actually it would seem that they had a great day, and it's kind of amazing to think that... Um, I hope they had a great day. Well, so far. They're not, they're not shouting at us, it must have been all right. The restoration of Rise has been a real team effort. We've had texts from most of the builders here. We've said it so many times, but really, seriously, we, we are love so them. lucky to have had the quality and the loyalty of the workforce that we've had here. The biggest journey on this house was stopping the house falling down, and we've done that. For the budget that we had to spend on it, I think it's looking really, really good. They've done it. Sarah and Graham have staged Rise's first wedding. Now, hopefully, they've found a way to keep this Georgian treasure standing for the next 200 years.